Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well today. So today's video is going to be a little bit different because I've been doing some cleaning out and I have found so many of my old sewing projects. So I thought it would be so much fun to kind of take you guys through a little bit of a timeline of how I learned to sew and show you some of my old projects. So this video might be a little bit more fun for me to film than for you to watch, but hopefully some of you guys will find it interesting. I've got a whole pile of old projects here. So I'm gonna just show you guys some of these and tell you a little bit about my sewing background, so I hope that's interesting. So I learned to sew when I was a pretty young child because I come from a long line of excellent seamstresses. My grandmother and my mom are both amazing at sewing and they are so perfectionistic with their own sewing that it makes mine pale by comparison. So if you like mine, you would really like theirs. So anyway, when I was, I think like three or four, my mom got me this sewing basket for Christmas, which had a lot of different materials I needed in it to get started with sewing. It had some like safety scissors and different things like that. I think it had straight pins and like a magnetic pin cushion. So I can't believe I still have this. I really would have thought it would have been crushed to smithereens by now, but I do still have it, which is kind of amazing. So that brings me to my very first sewing project. So I learned to sew with a needle and thread by hand before I ever learned to sew with a sewing machine, which makes sense because I was so young at the time. So the first thing I ever made is this quilt, which my mom helped me cut out from some of her scrap fabric. And I remember we used like a plastic ice cream container lid to cut out a template. And it has my name on the back because I guess I just had to write my name on everything back then. But I love looking at the stitching on this because to me now it's just kind of hilarious, but also really cute because it's these gigantic hand stitches. I think I tried to whip stitch the back together, it looks like, but it's all over the place. It's very interesting um, stitching. So anyway, I remember being so excited when I finally finished this because I think this was like a multi-year process of me sitting down to occasionally work on it and it finally got finished. And the fabrics on this, they actually look really old to me now, but they're so cute. There's the cutest little um, tea themed print on here, which I love. So I guess that's kind of a long standing theme in my life, but I'll try and do a close up so you guys can see some of the stitching on this because it is, definitely interesting. <laughs> so after I had learned to sew by hand and sewn a quilt, I started sewing on the machine when I was like seven or eight. And I don't know what has happened to this project, but I remember it really, really well. So I'm just going to tell you guys about it. And since I can't find it, if I can't find a picture, I have a picture of my sister with a very similar apron. So I will put that in the video for you guys to look at. But my grandmother came over around Christmas time when I was seven or eight and she brought Christmas fabric and we made an apron together. And that was when I first used a sewing machine, which was so exciting. I remember being just so proud of that final project because it looked super good in my opinion and the fabric was red with like Christmas cookies printed all over it. So I remember being so excited about it and just really pleased with how it came out. I wish I still had it. I'm pretty sure it's around here somewhere. I'm just not able to find it right now. So hopefully it still exists. But that was my first foray into using the sewing machine. It was very, very supervised, but I remember feeling very grown up and super accomplished with that project. Now, when I was eight years old, a few things happened. My family moved to California. I got a Josefina American Girl doll and started using the sewing machine on my own. So I bought these sewing patterns way back in the day. This is one of the first things I remember buying with my own money. This was from American Girl back then. They made these sewing patterns and these had gone on clearance on their website for like $5. So I remember I could actually buy them, which I was so excited about. And then the first thing that I remember kind of going and picking out the fabric for and making myself is this doll nightgown that I made for my Josefina doll, which I was just so excited about because if you guys were familiar with American Girl, you know that their products were so, so expensive. So it was super fun for me to be able to make something that looked really similar, at least in my childhood opinion, um, to what they already sold. So I remember the thing I was most excited about this were the little elasticated sleeves and I just didn't think it was going to work. And my mom helps me with this part because it was very fiddly, but I remember being just so excited with how it looked in the end. And so that was definitely a fun project and I was super proud of this as well. I'm looking at the stitching now and I can tell things like gathers were definitely a struggle and putting in these tiny sleeves for sure. There are some little holes here and all that kind of thing but it was definitely a fun project. Around that same time I also made another quilt and this one is funky. That's how I would describe it. It is very 
old and kind of yellowed over time. And the pieces are by no means even at all. It's like a bunch of very crooked pieces. So I think I did not have any concept of keeping a seam allowance even or cutting things out evenly, but I think it's still kind of cute. I don't know really why I still have this one. I don't have much sentimental attachment to it, but it is fun to look at. And I really like the colors that I picked out for this. Fast forwarding a little bit in time, I think I was about 12 when I made this. Judging by the length of it, I had to be a little bit older because it's pretty tall, but I was tall really early. Um, but anyway, I made a poodle skirt, which looks like this. And I was so excited about this. I remember having so much fun with this. This was actually to go along with a paper that I wrote. It was like a school project. I did a paper on I Love Lucy and the impact of I Love Lucy on 1950s America. And I made this poodle skirt. So I remember being very excited about that. And I love that it has the little goggly eyes on it. I think it's so cute. Um, I remember I got the pattern for this out of like the Halloween costume section in the Simplicity Pattern book. And so I guess this was my first circle skirt that I ever made. I'm looking at the waistline and I could not sew a waistband on correctly to save my life, I don't think, back in the day. I still struggle with this sometimes, guys. It's like getting um, this very even application here. This has tons of little pleats in it, which does happen to me sometimes and I have to get my seam ripper out and redo it. But yeah, I remember being really excited about this and I thought it looked really cute. And I think I wore it for a few different things, but mostly just around my house to play dress up in. So my interest in making American Girl doll clothes actually continued all the way through high school because I opened an Etsy shop in high school where I sewed historical American Girl doll clothes. And that was kind of how I earned extra money when I was younger, which was really, really fun. And I was super into it. I would try to make them as historically accurate as possible. I loved fashion history. And so I was really into that. I also made a few that were for my younger sisters because they are quite a bit younger than me. And they were still playing with dolls at the time I was a little bit older. So the only ones that I really have are ones that belong to them. So I've got this little pink dress that was made for a Samantha doll at one point in time. And then this little like Christmas outfit that I had done. I remember I was really interested in the heirloom sewing techniques. So things like using lace and um, like lace insertion where you have the borders of lace within the fabric. I loved doing that. So there was a lot of that. And I spent a lot of time on that. I will also put up some pictures from my Etsy shop from back in the day because I think I still have some of those and they were definitely interesting. I definitely went a little bit over the top and I had so much fun making those and selling them. I was a little bit sad when I went to college and had to shut the shop down because it was a really fun project for me. So as you can probably tell from all of these earlier projects, I wasn't really interested in sewing my own clothes until I was a little bit older. I started first sewing my own clothes, I would say when I was like, junior senior year of high school and the thing that got me into that well there were a couple of different things my mom bought a book that was the um, Colette patterns sewing handbook and I got really interested in that book it had patterns in it and I it wasn't the first time I saw handmade clothing that I thought actually resonated with me and was stylish in my you know 18 year old opinion. So that was kind of eye opening for me. It was like, oh, I can make clothes that I actually like. It doesn't have to be like what I see in the pattern book at Joann's. So that was exciting for me. And then I also got really into um, the kind of couture fashion history. So my mom would get me books from the library about um, Coco Chanel and Christian Dior and all of those people. And I loved reading about them and watching documentaries and seeing all of the detail that went into fashion in the past. And so that was really inspiring to me to kind of push me into wanting to make my own clothes. So I don't actually have a ton of these early projects, but what I do have is my old Flickr account. Who remembers Flickr? This was like pre-Instagram and I was already kind of blogging my sewing projects back then. So so I have a Flickr account that has a lot of my old projects. So let me grab my laptop and I'm gonna show you a few of them. Okay, this is so much fun to look at. I don't know why I thought that the internet needed to see all of this about me when I was 17 and 18, but I did. And so here is one of the first projects that I remember completing when I got into the Colette Patterns sewing handbook. This was a blouse from that book and it had these fluttery sleeves. And I'm actually really impressed with how it looked. I remember the fit wasn't like perfect on this. Um, but the bias binding on the sleeves looked really, really good here. I made this out of some silk that my mom had that she had gotten rid of 
and I think we like washed it. It was Silk Du Peony, but we washed it to make it like softer and have more of a drape. So I was pretty pleased with that project. Now you'll notice in a lot of these old pictures, I have like a book in front of my face or something. That is because my mom wouldn't let me put my face on the internet, which props to her. Um, online safety is important. So um, so in a lot of the, these, I had to come up with creative ways around showing my face on the internet. So it's kind of funny to look at. Here's another one from Colette Patterns. This is a tank top that I made and it's made out of this cotton fabric, which I actually use the same fabric to make my graduation dress from high school, which I can't find a picture of, which kind of is sad. I wish I had a picture of that. Um, but I think all my pictures have my graduation gown over that. So I'm not sure if one exists of that dress. But anyway, this tank top, I put like this bias binding out of this silk plaid all the way around it that I think is like decorator fabric. So it's an interesting combination. And then it has like a bow tie and then covered buttons down the front. And I have styled it very um, elegantly here with a blazer with embroidered bumblebees all over it. So that was, I guess, my, my look back then. <laughs> oh gosh. Now this dress I remember being so excited about. This is the first thing I ever remember sewing out of knit fabric. And this fabric I had bought in LA in the garment district and I was so excited about that. Um, so I loved this one. It's got this cute little like sweetheart neck detail and it's like almost like a two piece dress, which I thought was really cute or two in one piece, I guess, because it is one piece. But I remember being really happy with this one and it had pockets as well. I think this also might be the first time I sewed pockets in anything. So I was excited about that. Okay, here's one from my freshman year of college, and by this point in time, I was getting really into the vintage world on the internet. I had kind of discovered some different vintage bloggers. So this is a dress that I did that was from a vintage reproduction pattern, and the fabric was this linen rayon blend that I had gotten from Joanne's, and I remember my older brother took these photos for me when we were home for a weekend once, so I was very excited about this dress. I thought it turned out really cute. I don't think I would wear that color today, but I liked it a lot back then. Oh, here's a good one to finish up the flicker ones on. This is the first ever pair of pants that I made that were not pajamas. And I was really proud of these because they were such a tricky project for me. Um, they are out of this red linen. And I think this pattern was also from Colette Patterns. And I think I made these over a summer vacation once, but I remember I made the pockets out of this old J. Crew scarf that I cut up and I was so excited about it because it had the same red color in the pattern and I thought it matched so beautifully. But looking at this now, I can tell I definitely had a lot of fit issues with these. And if I were making them today, they would not be nearly that low rise. I find that so uncomfortable. Um, but that was more, I guess, the style back then. So anyway, I was pretty proud of these, but the fit definitely looks a little bit weird. Now these are actually still in circulation because my sister and my best friend have both had them at some point in time. And I don't know which of the two of them has them now, but they are somewhere. So if I can track them down sometime, maybe I can show them on here. I know one of them owns them, so they probably fit them a little bit better than they did me. <laughs> now I did manage to find one of my old pieces of clothing that I've made. I think the reason I don't have a lot of these is just because my style changed quite a lot. I mean, this was like 10 years ago that I first started doing this. And this is a skirt though that I made that I've kept around. I don't really wear this one, but I feel like I want to sometimes. So I have it. I think I wore it on Instagram even a few years ago. It's got this little scalloped edge at the bottom, which I think is super cute. And you might notice this is made out of that same silk that that blouse was made out of in the photos on Flickr. So I was excited about this one. I loved the scallop detail. It was harder to do than I thought I remember at the time, but I think it turned out pretty cute. So this was a good one. I was really pleased with this. So I think that's about all that I have to show you guys today, but I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of the journey that I've been on to get to where I am with sewing today. It's really been my whole life that I've been doing some sewing in some way, shape or form, but it's only been in the last few years that I've really been sewing things that I feel proud of wearing myself and that I really, really like taking more inspiration from what I want to wear. So that's definitely been a process for me, but I hope you enjoyed seeing some of these old projects. I would love to hear about your first projects if you've been sewing for a while, or even if you're new to sewing, Sewing. I love hearing about your guys' process and how your journey is going with learning how to sew. It's super exciting to me. We all start somewhere for sure. Um, I will put some close-ups in this video as well so you guys can see some of the funky stitching and stuff that's going on here. But I think I'm going to leave it here for today, guys. A little bit of a different style video, but I hope you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you again on Friday in my next video. Bye. Oh, we know what we have. Let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, that's
the future is bright.